The patient is seated with knees flexed to 90 degrees with the foot in zero degrees of inversion or eversion. The following goniometer alignment applies to both ankle dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. The proximal arm should follow the midline of the fibula using the fibular head for reference. The distal arm should be parallel to the lateral aspect of the fifth metatarsal, and the fulcrum is the lateral malleolus. First, the PT will demonstrate how to measure dorsiflexion. Make sure to stabilize the tibia and fibula throughout the entire motion. Use one hand to move the foot up into dorsiflexion by pushing on the bottom of the foot. Stop when resistance is felt or when compensations prevent proper motion. The end feel should be firm. Right ankle dorsiflexion, passive range of motion, 0 to 7 degrees. Next, the PT will demonstrate how to measure plantar flexion. Make sure to stabilize the tibia and fibula throughout the entire motion. Push downward with one hand on the dorsum of the foot. Stop when the resistance is felt or when compensations prevent proper motion. The end feel should be firm. Right ankle plantar flexion, passive range of motion, 0 to 67 degrees. Patient starts seated with knees flexed to 90 degrees and with hips in 0 degrees of rotation and 0 degrees of abduction or adduction. The following goniometer alignment applies to both tarsal inversion and eversion. The proximal arm should follow the anterior midline of the lower leg using the tibial tuberosity for reference. The distal arm should follow the anterior midline of the second metatarsal, and the fulcrum is the anterior aspect of the ankle between the two malleoli. First, the PT will demonstrate how to measure tarsal inversion. Stabilize the tibia and fibula throughout the entire motion. Push the forefoot down into plantar flexion, medially into adduction, and turn the sole of the foot medially into supination. Stop the motion once resistance limits motion or when compensations prevent proper motion. The end feel should be firm. Right tarsal inversion, passive range of motion, 0 to 26 degrees. Next, the PT will demonstrate how to measure tarsal eversion. Make sure to stabilize the tibia and fibula throughout the entire motion. Pull the forefoot laterally into abduction and upward into dorsiflexion, then turn the forefoot into pronation. Stop when resistance is felt or when compensations prevent proper motion. The end feel should be hard. Right tarsal eversion, passive range of motion, 0 to 29 degrees.
The patient starts in a prone position with hips and knees in neutral and the feet hanging over the edge of the supporting surface. The following goniometer alignment can be used for both subtalar inversion and eversion. The proximal arm should follow the posterior midline of the lower leg. The distal arm should be in line with the posterior midline of the calcaneus, and the fulcrum is the posterior aspect of the ankle between the two malleoli. First, the PT will demonstrate subtalar inversion. Stabilize the tibia and fibula throughout the motion. Pull the calcaneus medially into adduction and rotate it into supination. Try to avoid pushing on the forefoot. Stop when resistance is felt or when compensations prevent proper motion. The end feel should be firm. Right subtalar inversion, passive range of motion, 0 to 22 degrees. Next, the PT will demonstrate subtalar eversion. Stabilize the tibia and fibula throughout the motion. Pull the calcaneus laterally into abduction and rotate it into pronation. Avoid pushing on the forefoot. Stop when resistance is felt or when compensations prevent proper motion. The end feel should be hard. Right subtalar eversion, passive range of motion, 0 to 12 degrees. The patient is seated with knees flexed to 90 degrees with hips in 0 degrees of rotation and 0 degrees of abduction or adduction and in subtalar neutral. The following goniometer alignment can be used to measure transverse tarsal inversion and eversion. The proximal arm should follow the anterior midline of the lower leg using the tibial tuberosity for reference. The distal arm should follow the anterior midline of the second metatarsal, and the fulcrum is the anterior aspect of the ankle between the two malleoli. The PT will now demonstrate transverse tarsal inversion. Stabilize at the calcaneus. Grasp the metatarsals and push the forefoot into only slight plantar flexion, medially into adduction, and rotate the sole of the foot medially into supination. Be careful not to dorsiflex the ankle. Stop when resistance limits motion or compensations prevent proper motion. The end feel should be firm. Right transverse tarsal inversion, passive range of motion 0 to 20 degrees. And now the PT will demonstrate transverse tarsal eversion. Stabilize at the calcaneus. Pull the forefoot laterally into abduction, upward into slight dorsiflexion, and rotate the sole of the foot laterally into pronation. Stop when resistance limits motion or compensations prevent proper motion. The end feel should be firm. Right transverse tarsal eversion, passive range of motion, 0 to 28 degrees. <laughs> 